Detola Salah, where the governor is saying our appointment was to strengthen the policy direction in the education sector of the state. On Retalk this morning, we host this STEM expert, a former special senior special assistant on education to the Lagos State Governor Babaji De Sanwolu, and now the special advisor on education to Kwara State Governor. Dr. Adetola Salau is the founder of Charisma for You Educational Foundation, a platform that uh, advocates for STEM education to help young people embrace STEM subjects to improve lives and driving development. Dr. Adetola Rieke Salau joins Ray Talk this morning. Uh, good morning. Good to host you on the program. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. And I will start by felicitating you on your recent appointment. Thank you. A lot of work to be done. Uh, all right. So uh, once again, uh, it's our pleasure to host you on OK105.FM. Okay let's let's get started. Uh, Doctor Adetola Salau studied abroad, if I'm correct, and even taught for years in public schools, uh, New York, uh, to be precise. And now she's back at home, giving back to the society. At a time, uh, the Jackpa syndrome is still on the rise. Why did you choose to stay back in Nigeria? What's the motivation behind that? You know, there's that famous saying, that famous adage, east or west, you can't finish it, huh? It's east or west, home is best. Mm. For me, no matter how long I was out out there, home was where my heart always belonged. Particularly when I was teaching, I used to always long to come back and see what could be done in our educational sector because a lot of stuff that happened to me when I was in primary, well, mostly secondary school. And I also studied one year in the university system here too. And I wasn't very happy with my experiences. And I, every time I would teach, every time I would go through training, I would have interventions, and I would engage with the administration out there, I would keep thinking, what are the things I could do differently back home? Mm. What are the things that I could do to contribute? What are the things that I could do to make a difference from what I experienced? <clears throat> I mean, it got so serious that subconsciously, I didn't even realize I started doing it. Whenever my school, every, I think it was every two years, or every three years, they would get rid of textbooks, they would change them, we would do a review, and they would want to chalk out all those books. And I would start screaming. And I would bundle all those books, and I will take them in my car, and I will take them to my closet, my garage, it was filled with textbooks because I would take those books, particularly the math and science books, and I would think about the children here that would benefit from those textbooks. And I've given them away by the way, a lot of these books since I came back. But you see that subconsciously in the back of my mind was always, I'm coming back, I'm coming back home. So I already started preparing without realizing that I was doing that. So that's why I'm home. Hello? Yeah, I'm here. All right, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, now... So I... I yeah, go ahead. Okay, because of time, looking at a lot of works you've put into education, it got me thinking uh, uh, how uh, how you uh, ended, uh, uh, how did you end up being an educator? Uh, because I wanted to ask where that teaching bug come from, but let's do little reality checks because we don't have all the often times when we discuss education in Nigeria, something a lot of people have said very repeatedly is that we have a cloudy environment in the education sector. Now, discussing education, we have to look at a number of parameters, we look at access, we look at quality, we look at relevance, equity, efficiency, and others. Where are we as a country in none of these parameters? First of all, I actually didn't answer the question on how I became an educator. My parents were educators themselves. Okay, interesting. My father was a professor, and mm. so was my mom. Um, so... So I've always been around the educators. So I grew up in Africa. So that's, yeah, where, that's the, where it came. Did you, okay, okay. Interesting. <laughs> yes, that's where it came. Okay. Um, I've always been around the educators. I love, I love the idea of seeing people when an illumination, you know, comes to their mind. Like, wow, and then that look in their eyes. It's what always gets to me every time. Um, so, yes, you mentioned about the parameters where we are. Look, I'm not going to let us turn this into a bemoaning fest about how far we are from a lot of places where we should be. I like to start from where are we now? What are the strengths we already have? And how can we build on that? 
And like I tell people, so many of us, well, myself included, we're beneficiaries of a great aspect of the Nigerian educational system. When I was growing up, it was holding up how important it was, how your mind was so important, how important it was that you use that mind to give back to society at large, to your community. And I'm still doing that. I'm still using that. And a lot of people in my generation, and I'm um, hopeful that we'll do the same for these young ones too, were raised like that, and we push that. I tell people that's why no matter where we go, I mean, we have Nigerians all the way in Australia. I went to Australia in 2018. We're excelling there. We're doing really great stuff in the tech scene, in so many other areas. We are, we're in Europe, we're in Canada, we're in the States, we're even in Asia. We're doing very well. So there, there's something that we have, and there's something right that we have. Of course, there are things that also need to be fixed and worked on. And that's where people like me, we come in to play that, okay, look, these are the strengths that we have, and these are the areas that we need to build on. And the areas that we need to build on is, okay, right now, the world is shifting away from the way learning used to be before. And just having this one, um, how would I put it down? This one defined rule. Right now, it rules are multiple, multiple things that you're doing at the same time in that one rule. It's not just one thing. So because of that, you have to have a plethora of different skills. You have to keep on upskilling yourself so that you can, you can maneuver this, you can maneuver that, you can maneuver that. It's not just one thing anymore. One. So because of that, you have to have the ability to be a lifelong learner. You finish learning this, you're good, you're strong, then boom, you're now able to switch and now do something else, do this, do that, do that. That's the way the world is now. Our learning, our teaching has to reflect this. It hasn't done that. That is where that, our, our deficiency is. It hasn't done that. It is still stuck in the same um, multiple different subjects. You come at a certain time, you end at a certain time, you come out and you can't really define, okay, this is what I'm able to do. I'm able to produce this. I'm able to create this. Whereas when you are working, that, that's why there's such a disconnect. When you are working, no matter what, at the end of a month, at the end of a quarter, at the end of a year, there have to be tangible things that your boss will be able to say, this is what you've done. You've created, you've produced, you've added. So we need to start reflecting that too in the classroom. We need to start making sure that they present, they're able to create, they're able to produce. That's the difference. That's the disconnect. Mm. Okay, we'll discuss your appointment, but before that, Early 2023, the United Nations Children Emergency Fund estimated the total number of out-of-school children to be over 20 million, and that figure, I must say, is scary. And this situation <laughs> seems to be dire because some of these out-of-school kids uh, ended up being recruited by insurgents. What should be our focus at mm -hmm. this time? Can we get them back to school? Of course we can. And I tell people that the issue we have is that we have such a strict, defined understanding concept of school and learning. For me, school is not that four walls. School is beyond that. I can tell you that majority of the learning that I've done in my life and that has carried me thus far was not within four walls. Sometimes it was even at midnight. I just recently acquired my doctorate degree and initially when I began it was hybrid, I was going to the United States and then COVID happened. And then I was online, but did my learning stop? No, I go to work during the day. I will undertake my assignments, put together my papers, my presentation. Then at midnight, midnight here in Nigeria, which was sometimes 6, 6 p.m. Mm. or 5 p.m. depending on the time difference because of the, um, these are day savings, uh, the daylight savings in the U.S. I would, I would be in class, midnight. So everybody else is sleeping. They've ended their day. My day wasn't ended. I'm still in class. So my learning still continued. My learning continued on my, um, my office. Well, I call it my office space upstairs. Sometimes I would move to my sofa. But imagine I was still learning. Both sofa or the, or the table, that table, the chair and the desk. But I was in the classroom. I wasn't sitting down with the teacher in front of me. I mean, yes, my teacher was on Zoom, <laughs> but or on the phone call. But my learning continued. Mm. So we need to start preparing our minds that okay. learning is not just stopping that. Mm. So to me, once we're able to start doing that, okay. we can reach out to these children. Mm. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Okay, we can reach out to these children. We can use different avenues. Mm. 
I was telling someone, a lot of the spaces, public spaces that we have, churches, mosques, we can use those places as learning places where we can say, come, I want you to come for 30 minutes, I want you to come for one hour. Today we're going to be working on, um, let's say, plumbing, because plumbing is a valuable skill. If when everyone, I don't see anything that anyone loses by knowing how to put pipes together and find and fix that you know, disjointed point over there. Mm. It's not something that we can benefit from. Mm. Same with automotive repair. It's another one that is a very valuable skill. So there are all these skills okay. that you can teach. Yeah. You have another engagement at 9.30, so you have just uh, less than uh, two minutes now. But you are, <laughs> you have two questions, so I don't know how you want to go about that. Let's talk about your uh, ap appointment now. You are an advocate mm -hmm. of science literacy. How did that influence the education sector in Lagos, where you served for years? What footprint did you leave behind in Lagos, and how will the same energy be replicated here in Kuala State? Science literacy is very important to me, and that became even more to me glaring than during that COVID. And during COVID, a lot of the work that we did was educating our students and our teachers about how important hygiene was and what a role science played in our day-to-day -day lives. That is something that I'm very driven and passionate about continuing in Quara State. I am continuing and working on bringing the kind of the same partners and even more to come join me on the in the work that I'm going to be doing in Quara making sure that we work with the teachers first, because teachers to me are very, very critical part of the equation. Then, of course, working with the students. They're going to be driving their understanding of scientific concepts. And then how do we apply? You notice a lot of what I keep saying throughout today's application, application, application. Mm -hmm. How do we apply that knowledge that we're now working on, we're learning in the classroom? How do we apply it to our day to day life? And then ultimately, how are we going to use that to benefit all of us? And the way we do that is problem solving. I'm very, very, very driven about problem solving. Anytime you see me doing programs, anytime you see me talking, you always hear me talk about solving. I don't like even calling them problems. I like calling them challenges, solving challenges. So we're going to continue that good work here in Kwara State. Mm -hmm. And we're going to put in all our hearts and our minds to carrying out that work. Fortunately, we have a, an action governor who really believes in all hands on deck, whatever it takes, whatever we have to do, who passionately believe, um, cares about his, the citizens of Quara and wanting nothing but the best for them. So it's up to us who are his cabinet members as well as everybody else who also serves in the public capacity to follow this mandate and see how do we drive and push excellence in all these different areas for our citizens. Education is such an important foundation, and I know that's why you and I are having this talk today. Mm -hmm. And I'm hopeful that my fellow Quarans, yes, I'm one of you, remember, I'm your daughter, that's why I'm here with you now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, that's why I'm here now, to bring these valuable insights and knowledge and experience that I've had all these years to see how I can serve both our teachers, if I keep saying teachers are important, and our students. And I'm hopeful that they keep on reaching out to me. And please, I am very, very, very open-minded with ideas, with suggestions, with comments, and even criticism. Because the only way I can learn, and we can all learn and benefit, is by you coming to tell me, look, let's, I, you know, let's work on this. What about this? What about that? Even now, as I speak, I get people send me messages on my um, Instagram page. They, they tell me, oh, what about this? What about that? They send me messages on my Facebook. Aside, and I'm very, very open. Aside the social media, what other channel can teachers uh, communicate? What what other channels can they use to uh, send the complaints or observations or whatever to you? Uh, also on my WhatsApp or Telegram, okay. they can they can also reach out to me. I I want and I will continue to keep an open door. I learned that in Lagos State to keep an open door, so I want to keep an open door also here in Quara for them to be able to reach me. I'm, I don't have an official um, space yet, but once I do, I will make that also public knowledge so mm. that anytime mm. I can be reachable, I am approachable, and you come to tell me, look, what about this? What about working on that? What about this school? What about you know that program? I'm always open, please. Impressive. Because of your other engagements, we have to let you go on the program today. We appreciate your time with us. Dr. Adetolari Kesala is a STEM expert and, of course, the special advisor to the Korea State Governor on Education. But looking forward to hosting you live in the studio in our subsequent uh, episodes. Thank you so much. 
<laughs> in fact, I was going to say that to I'm looking forward to coming back. Please. Right. Anytime, any place. Just right. call me. I'll be there. Please enjoy your weekend. Thank you. All right. I will. You too. Uh -huh.